As I look back, I had supportive parents. I had a father, you can see from all the videos of my life, that was right there at the banks all along the way saying, you can do it, baby. If I fell, he was the first one to meet me at the shoreline with a hug. He gave me everything that I could ever desire and ever need to be successful. I wanted to please so bad, and I wanted to be this champion in everybody's eyes. But somewhere along the journey, I began to feel that I wasn't enough. Well, my journey on the water began when I was four years old. My father was a river rat. He loved uh, hot dogging on the waters of Bath, North Carolina, and he wanted to share his passion of water sports with me. And so at the age of four, they tied my skis together, and I said, hit it for the very first time. And little did I know how those two words, hit it, would change my life. I said that word for 30 years on the waters of the world. Lots of ups, lots of downs, um, lots of victories, lots of defeats. But that word and that persevering spirit to say, okay, I want to keep going every single day and help me to be a world champion and a world record holder. And I thought what I was living all those years on the water and the, the victories that I've received on the water and all the accolades and the money and all these things that I had, I thought that was life. As I look back over my life, you know, I, I said hit it over and over skiing, but it took me a long time to say hit it to God, to get off that spiritual dock on a daily basis and to follow after Him, basically because I was afraid. I was afraid of what I'd have to give up. I was afraid of where God would take me. I knew if I said, hit it, God, He would take me down this path that would just be miserable, honestly, is what I felt like Christianity would be like. I looked at the Bible and it was this thick, and I thought, okay, thou shalt not do this and this and this. What kind of life would that be? And I honestly felt like if I said, hit it to God and followed Him, that He would suck the life out of me. I believed in Jesus Christ from the time I was able to think, <laughs> you know? It's just, I was taught about Him, I knew about Him, and I believed with all my heart that Jesus Christ had died on the cross for my sin. For me, it took coming to a place where I was hitting rock bottom physically and emotionally. Um, that w At that point, I finally truly looked at Him, not just for salvation, because at that point, I believed in Him for my salvation. He was my ticket to heaven. Looking for the final, he's got to get better than a buoy to beat out Jennifer Leachman. Yeah, I saw that she only got once. So I knew that I really needed to hold my edge after one, and just I wanted to, and I'd done it, that we hit it four or five times, so that's all I needed. Christy Overton, on her first pro start, has won the championship of the women's slalom, beating out the veteran Dina Mapple. I can say without a doubt that those little red buoys, those slalom buoys were my idol. I never liked to think that, but those buoys had some power over me. And this is what I thought about. It based my worth. I based my worth on those buoys, skiing and rounding those buoys and being a world champion and being Christy the skier was the only thing I had ever known since I was four years old. And when I couldn't do that, it really rocked my world. And it can sound so funny to someone who's never experienced, um, you know, sports or been so, I guess you could say addicted to something, but in life, we all put our identity in something, and mine was on the water. When I look at these little rubber balls that I skied around for so many years, it's amazing the emotions that those little rubber balls could bring out in me. Um, emotions of despair, of hate. I literally hated myself um, for missing these stupid balls because I felt that I was only worth something if I performed a certain way. 
I can remember times where I would just sink at the end of the lake and just take my fist and just beat myself in, in my face. And I did that for years. And I stopped the day that my husband, we were dating at the time, he turned around and he saw me doing it and he burst out laughing. And he's like, can you do that again? <laughs> that was fun to watch. And at that point I realized how silly that is to be so just caught up in buoys that I would take fists and just hit myself, that I would think about skiing in front of a running boat. And I would have these thoughts of, if you do that, you won't have to do this anymore. A big letdown for the United States. That's more than a full pass below her best performance ever. It took a long time to realize that God was not concerned with how many buoys that I I ran or how many feet I jumped or how many tricks I did and my, his love for me was not based on how I did in school or what kind of crowd I was you know walking around in or how my clothes looked all these things that the world tells you that you've got to have to be a success he he loved me because I was his child he loved me because I had put my faith and trust in him and the Bible says that's what pleases him is that we our faith pleases God and um, it took a long time to realize that. For me, it took coming to a place to realize the depth of God's love for me. And when I truly started realizing that Jesus Christ loves me, and there's a verse in Romans that talks about the love of God, and it says, if God loves you so much that He gives you what is most precious to Him. He gave His Son to us. This is won't He give you everything else? And my whole life was about accomplishing things and holding on to things that I thought I had to have. When, it, when I finally released those things to God and began to focus on Him and His love for me, I began to find this place of rest and this place of peace that I couldn't find in red buoys, that I couldn't find in trophies. I found purpose. And when I started using that thing, that water skiing gift for His glory, it has been quite an adventure. You know, trophies break, trophies, there's dust all over them, money that you win gets spent. But the things that you do for the Lord, they last forever.